everybody, Catherine Hart here of Heart and Soul Studio, the unacting coach. There, I'm finished. Turn off the video, we're done. <laughs> now, actually, I have something I'm going to teach you guys this week. I work with a lot of people on monologues. Yeah, we need monologues a lot to maybe get a new agent, to audition for a repertory company, to audition for a school, just to do stuff for yourself, <laughs> to go to an audition class, a monologue class. Anyway, we do auditions uh, and with monologues a lot in this business, and, and we, you know, we like to work on monologues just to keep our chops up. So let me give you a couple of tips. I work with people on monologues all the time. And here are the things that I always look for beyond the basics. Of course, you have to really do your backstory for your character and really know what you want, your objective in the scene. You need to really understand what's going on, what just happened, be able to create your reality. I'm expecting that stuff. And by the way, if you can't do that stuff, you need to take some acting classes <laughs> before you do a monologue. But anyway, any rate, I'm presuming that we've got the basic stuff going on here. This is what I make sure to really make you stand out from everybody else that's going to be doing a monologue that day. At the beginning, I always feel like you should win every audition before you ever open your mouth. And by the way, I can tell if you are a good uh, actor before you start to even talk because I see if you really become the character and you see the world and you start to imagine as, as if you're really there. So, uh, I'm expecting that to happen. But here are the extra little tricks that you really need to do also. I think you always need to pick a hook into your scene. A hook that's going to make it stand out from everybody else. It may be, I'm really moving and rolling around on the ground and doing something really crazy with this weird monologue. Or it may be, I am not moving at all. I am so keeping everything inside of me and using my power to do so much without moving very much. That that might be what the, what the hook is. It could be, uh, you know, an idea that I have. It could be the monologue itself. It could be some kind of a character uh, backstory. Uh, there, there are a lot of things that I could use for my hook um, to make it interesting. So something, it's a gimmick. You know, not to make it seem cheap, but it really is kind of a gimmick. Something that's going to be entertaining or wow them or surprise them or uh, make you feel more like you understand this character or make you have fun. Something that's going to spark you. Like someone was trying to, uh, to figure out which monologues they wanted to do, to do the other day and she was telling me, Oh, well, I, I was thinking about this monologue. I just love this thing. It really makes me feel this way, and I do this, and I love it. I just, and I said, okay, you should do that monologue. Because your light is on already. Just thinking about doing this monologue, you're, you're, you're going to be living and breathing, and some magic's going to happen just because you love it. All right, so then after you come up with a hook, some kind of an interesting idea about what's going to make things cook here that's going to make me stand out. Make sure at the very beginning that you really get their attention. Now, not so that they know that's what you're trying to do. It's sort of like, you know, women when we when we dress in a beautiful dress, we don't want people to think that we're trying so hard. You know, we took two hours to get ready, but we don't want them to think that. We want them to think we just happened to walk out of the shower looking like this today. Well, Actually, I did. But anyway, for the rest of you beautiful women that take time, at any rate, but you want to have a little something at the beginning of the monologue that wows them. Every once in a while, maybe I'll have someone start with their back to the audience and flip around. Or something, a sound. Something that just, you know, isn't what they're going to expect. Something different. Something weird. But it still should obviously go along with what you're doing, with the idea and the character and, you know, what would happen. But, uh, you know, create something wonderful. Like you're putting together a beautiful theatrical piece. And what would I do artistically to make this something wonderful? And I'm going to suggest you do the same on the end. The very end, always end, after you finish talking with one more... And here's a little trick I, I use a lot. 
it, it sounds like it's cheap, but it actually will make something organic and wonderful happening. On the very last line, do the exact opposite of whatever you were just doing. So if I was just yelling, quiet on the last line. Or if I'm very, being very, very quiet on the words right before it, just yell the last line! so that you kind of surprise them. Do something that they don't expect. And please pick a monologue that every Tom, Dick, and Harry hasn't already done a thousand times. If you bore the people that are auditioning you because they've seen it a thousand times, you've already got, you know, like one nail in the coffin. If you do something they haven't seen before, they're going to be so happy and refreshed and excited and entertained just because they haven't seen 3,000 people before do this. You're going to make them uh, think, oh, you're something special just because you did something different. So always pick a monologue that, you know, that's something interesting or fun. And pick one that you love that makes you just want to get out there and tap dance. And last advice that I give to everybody. Go out and have fun. Whenever, whenever I finish working with people, and sometimes I'll work on monologues with people, one, two, three different sessions for, depending upon how difficult the monologue, monologue is, to really orchestrate it and choreograph it and, and make it real and organic and something that's working with this person and get the timing right. And, and, and all this stuff. And then the last thing I always say is, now we've worked it so hard. When you go out to do this, forget everything I just told you. Just go out and have fun. Turn your light on and go out there and do something you love with all your heart and soul. And um, that, by the way, is the best advice I can give you. So, go for it. And just...